Hey, I'm Dr. Trent Langhofer. I'm the clinic director of the Community Counseling Center at Colorado Christian University. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Ryan Burkhardt, director of the Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program, also at Colorado Christian University. We've been doing a vlog series where we've answered questions, commented on stigmas and benefits of counseling. And today we want to talk a little bit about depression, probably one of the most common mood disorders that counselors treat. And Dr. Burkhart, you and I were just talking uh, briefly earlier about some of what kind of you're seeing in terms of trends as it relates to treating uh, depression in clients over the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Share, share with us just a little bit about kind of what you're seeing uh, as far as that's concerned. Well, I think the reality is, I mean, the most common thing that a lot of us wrestle with is depression and anxiety. Uh, this kind of seems to be a lot of our, our daily lives and not, not just for our clients, but even heck, I even know counselors who wrestle with depression and anxiety. So it's, it's, it's one of the most common things that, that we as counselors not, not only treat, but also what our clients are going through and what brings them to counseling. So I think first and foremost, I would say, if you are experiencing some of these like symptoms, right, these things that you're going through, you're not alone. There's a lot of people, a lot of people who are feeling the same way. And I think the question that really comes up is, is why? What's happening for, for most of people in our culture and our world right now to be wrestling with anxiety and depression and depression symptoms? And you know, I maintain a, a small supervisory caseload um, of people who are graduated and they're working towards becoming fully licensed clinicians. And we, of course, saw depression increase in 2020 with a lot of COVID-related uh, situations. And we started noticing something interesting with me and my supervisees. It seemed like a lot of my supervisees who were trying to treat depression, in a lot of cases, they weren't making a lot of headway. And we couldn't figure out why just doing kind of normal treatment stuff, why the depression seemed to kind of be persisting and sticking in our clients. And we kind of did a shift in, in the early fall of 2020 and we began seeing some things that really were, were kind of caught our attention. So we, we began treating depression around, you know, what's your meaning in life? What, what purpose do you have? Right. Uh, what do you have hope in? So we began kind of exploring these things in clients around meaning and purpose and hope. And what we found is that a lot of us, a lot of us struggle to find meaning and purpose and hope in life. Um, especially in the midst of everything that is going on. And what we saw was that as we began to work with others and journey alongside others and, and kind of be a part of their story and help them find meaning and purpose and hope, we began to see some of the depressive symptoms go, go away. And we know that we as, as Christians, there's a very specific place that we find meaning and purpose and hope. Um, and that that has something to say about where we as believers may find some relief from depressive symptoms. I'm not suggesting that if we're going through mental health disorders, we just need to pray it all away, right? But, but I am saying that we may find some of the things that may actually lead to greater emotional regulation in our relationship with Jesus. And that offers a lot to us. But Trent, I also know that you've seen some things around kind of behaviors, kind of becoming tangled with emotions, and I'd be curious for you to speak about that. Yeah, Ryan, uh, very well said. And I've seen some of the same things in the clinicians that I supervise as well. You know, so everybody in life at one season or another is going to feel a little bit of dip in their sense of overall well-being yeah. and, and struggle with depression. But but for some people, that becomes kind of a chronic problem. And, and we've noticed that it's tended to become more chronic in the midst of a global pandemic, which for lots of us was an existential threat. You know, if I get yeah. ill, will I survive if my loved ones do? And so that kind of pervasive chronic uh, fear and uncertainty really activated, I think, in lots of people what may have otherwise just been a seasonal dip in, in feelings of well-being, and it, and it stuck around, and people really started to feel feelings of hopelessness and despair, and I think really dealing with the meaning of life and finding purpose in suffering, as you suggested, is a huge yeah. piece of how to improve 
uh, the symptoms of depression. We we often talk about clients uh, when we're when we're working with depression at the community counseling center about the degree to which they can untangle um, how they feel from what they do, yeah. disconnecting. In other words, that's so emotion hard to from do, behavior. Right? Oh man, right. Well, because how I how I so often feel influences what I do. Yeah. You know, that's part of it. And and it takes it does take some um, awareness to really do that effectively. And, and here's what we see with clients often when we teach them the concept of unraveling feelings from behavior. Most of the time clients are thinking on big terms, like sure. like really grand terms. And sometimes what we're really meaning is, hey, when you're feeling overwhelmed and in despair and hopeless, uh, it's hard even sometimes to brush your teeth or practice yeah. good personal hygiene. Yeah. And so we're, we're encouraging clients, man, just, just to do a little small, just br- put some toothpaste on your toothbrush and brush for a few minutes, whether you feel like doing it or not. And if you can unravel your feeling from your behavior just a little bit on in that, in that one uh, example, for instance, yeah you can begin kind of this uh, uh, more benevolent cycle where I do something good. I feel a little bit of victory in doing that good thing. I'm a little bit mo- more motivated to do something good again. And I do the next right thing. And then I feel a little victory and then I'm motivated. Whereas, whereas depression often uh, is, is something that makes it hard to feel mo- motivated. And so then I don't do that one activity, which makes me feel even worse, which makes me feel even less motivated, uh, which makes it less likely that I'll do the next right activity. It's so a vicious cycle. It really just is. Just breaking that cycle by unraveling feelings and behavior, just doing something really, really small to kind of interrupt that pattern. And it's not to say uh, that, that that just magically makes feelings of depression subside. Sure. As much as it takes the edge off enough to improve a client's level of functioning, so that their their uh, uh, lifestyle is is much less impaired. And yeah, and I would think that this is I mean this is one of the benefits of going and seeing a counselor because you got it. It kind of feels like we're hardwired for our behavior to follow our emotions, and right. if we're not journeying alongside someone who is helping us, kind of consciously through awareness kind of begin to untangle some of these. Right. And I think that we would honestly probably call this to a certain degree, emotional intelligence, right? Right. It's probably one of the reasons why we would actually go and see a counselor around some of these issues, because we're, we're almost kind of trying to change the way that we're kind of naturally, we naturally are. Yeah. 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 And right, you know, the scriptures, Ephesians 4.26, I often reference in, in situations like this, not necessarily turn into book, chapter, and verse, but the scriptures say, uh, in your anger, do not sin. Mm-hmm. And so the underlying principle there is your emotions don't always have to dictate your behavior. Yeah. And I, we're, we are so hardwired for behavior to follow emotion, um, but there is a little bit of space between stimulus and response. And if we can, if we can learn to elongate that space between stimulus and response and just do something a little bit differently, we can really dramatically change our pattern with some small, simple uh, differences in behavior uh, over enough time. So those are some of the primary means and methods that we use uh, to improve a person's symptoms when they're struggling with depression. So to kind of capture kind of what we're talking about, if, if someone's watching this and they may be wrestling with feeling depressed or wrestling with clinical depression, some of the ways, and there's, there's many ways that I think counselors can, can come alongside that person, but some of the ways that someone may benefit from going and sitting down and talking with a counselor um, would really revolve around, you know, coming alongside, having someone come alongside you to help sure. you find hope and meaning and purpose just in your day-to-day life and also bring a different level of emotional intelligence around the the relationship between your behaviors and your emotions. And if we take time and prioritize maybe stepping into those dynamics and those conversations, we may see someone feel better. We may see depressive symptoms kind of lessen. You're exactly right. And, and hopefully too, just talking through this, 
gives people enough of an understanding of how that process might look, that it, that it reduces the fear. Man, it can be really hard to pick up the phone and call for help when yeah. I'm struggling. And sometimes just an awareness of, hey, here's how that process kind of works. Um, you don't have to be alone in your struggle. You don't have to feel like you're unsupported in your struggle. And uh, there are a lot of counseling centers, the community counseling center here at CC would love to help if you're uh, a Colorado resident. And if you're not in the state of Colorado, I'd just encourage to, to find a, an agency nearby that has some credentials and some clinicians with some experience. And, and just, just take the risk of giving somebody the opportunity to share in your journey with you. I, I, I promise uh, people who are watching that are struggling will be glad that they took that step. Yeah. Well, thank all of you for joining Trent and I again as we talk about just different questions and stigmas around counseling. Trent mentioned if you're a Colorado resident, just the resource of the Community Counseling Center that CCU has in Colorado Springs. You know, I would also say if this type of walking beside people, kind of being a part of their story and coming alongside them is something that sounds interesting to you, I would also invite you to check out the Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program at CCU. We have amazing professors like Trent uh, who would be teaching you in your courses. So thank you again, and we look forward to having more time with you in the future through uh, another vlog. I believe our next one's on anxiety, if I remember correctly. That's so, correct. Really yep, looking yep. forward to it. So we'll sit down and we'll talk about anxiety. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>